that's what you get when you let your heart win. Get your guy liner and your hair straightener. Put your hair over one eye, because today we're talking about pop punk royalty. We're talking about Paramore's Riot. Welcome to Pop Culture Catechism, where we take a look at art from pop culture and uncover the true, good, and beautiful elements found therein. Let's get started. Welcome to Pop Culture Catechism on Awaken Catholic. You can support Awaken Catholic by going to awakencatholic.org and making a one-time or recurring tax-deductible donation. You can also support us and support your own prayer life by downloading the Hallow app through our website. If you haven't heard of Hallow, it is an awesome prayer app. It'll change your prayer life. If you're looking for a way to work in a little more Jesus into your life, Hallow is the way to go. It's a free app, but they also have a premium version, and you can get a free month of premium by going to hallow.app slash awaken or just go to our website awakencatholic.org and click on pray and you can have the voice of jesus from the chosen series lull you to sleep with a nice nighttime meditation i know lots of people that use it all the time my wife uses it which means i use it while we're falling asleep too and it's uh it's awesome so check that out i am so excited today to have the judicris himself jude <laughs> benjamin is here with us I'm so, so excited. Welcome, Jude. Hey, it's good to be here, Mike. Mm -hmm. Tell, tell the, the, the people about you. Uh, Nick and I know you very well, but uh, a lot of people may not. So, so tell us about yourself. Sure. So well, my name is Benjamin Jude. I am a worship leader and recording artist um, based out of St. Louis, Missouri. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the nickname, I go by Jude, which is my middle name. Mm -hmm. um, and the nickname Judicris came about Probably about 12 hours ago, yeah, Mike. Is yeah, that right? Not long, yeah. Mm -hmm. This morning? Mm -hmm. This morning? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. I think it fits. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it, so. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. All right, so today we are talking about uh, the band Paramore and specifically their second big major label release album, Riot, which uh, released in 2007. And that album, so it's 13 years old, but there's a reason why we're talking about it is because it is still considered kind of the quintessential seminal pop punk album by a lot of people. Maybe a couple other albums. Maybe you can weigh in on this too, Jude, but I would think like Under the Cork Tree by Fall Out Boy, um, Jimmy Eat World's Bleed American. Um, you know, those, th those three albums for me represent like the very best of the pop punk era through the 2000s um there's probably a couple of others you can mention in there they this for this album they were nominated for best new artist grammy which they didn't win because they lost to amy winehouse but they uh, they they were nominated and uh I, in my humble opinion, this is the best pop punk album i know lots of people would disagree with that but i just think it is awesome so uh yeah anything else you want to say about it jude no i i agree i think uh you know, it kind of depends on where exactly you hop on the pop punk train. Mm -hmm. um, but any which way you go, you have to pass through Paramore. You have to pass through Riot mm -hmm. at some point uh, to your end station. And and for me, like this was the first time I heard this record when it came out. It was as I was really kind of coming of age as a songwriter and mm -hmm. as a musician. And I was leading a pop punk band of my own for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of the songs that we're going to be talking about here um, in this episode, I know like we jammed them in our rehearsals, mm -hmm. um, just as, as a band in, in the basement. Uh, so yeah, it's very, I think kind of very central to my formation as an artist. And, um, yeah, this just, this, this album has a very special place in my heart, which I'm sure we'll get into. Yeah, me too. Let's throw up the album cover up there. And, uh, I remember my band covered, that's what you get. We also did crush, crush, crush all the time. And those are just, those are just great albums are we able to get the album cover up there nick there we go there's riot and there is the band i also have another picture of the band here with taylor york taylor york didn't officially join the band until after this but he's still playing guitar all over this album and the band as it exists today is just Haley and taylor he's there in the back so i figured we should uh include him so i remember the first time i ever heard 
Paramore. I had just graduated from college and I was I was working in uh, Garrison, New York, as a youth minister with Capuchin Youth and Family Ministries, Capuchin Franciscans represent. And there was a girl in my youth group who had like blue mohawk hair, and her dad was the music director at the church. And I would play music just as we were gathering at youth group. And one day she was like, "Can I pick the music?" And I was I was like, "Well, I would need to hear it first. And she goes, "Oh." I will make you a mix CD. And she made me a mix CD and I still have this mix CD cause it was dang good. And it was, it was so, so much good stuff um, from the pop punk era. And the second song was off. All we know is falling their, their first album. And when the, when it came in, I was just like, who is that singing? what the heck band is this? And there was this 16 year old girl named Haley Williams. And when this album came out and uh, it was just like, Whoa, this is, this band is, is here to stay. So uh, I remember just listening to the wheels off this record. So, yeah, I want to hop into first. We'll, we'll talk about the music of it and then we will get into kind of the spirituality and the themes of it. Jude, I'm hearing just a little bit of echo. Are you able to turn me down just a, just a smidge? Yeah, sure. That should be better. So, Jude, tell me, what do you love about this album musically, artistically? Um, so, I, I think it's the thing that draws me to pop punk as a whole is um, it, there's there's an energy in this genre, mm -hmm. and um, and there's always kind of a little bit of a crossover with emo music and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You mentioned Jimmy Eat World; um, they have a pretty heavy emo streak in, in their music as well. Um, and what I love about Paramore, and specifically this album, Riot, um, is there is an uplifting tone, a positivity mm -hmm. to the whole thing. Um, and when you put that with these like super gainy, overdriven electric guitars and, mm -hmm. and big cymbals, big snare drums, um, and just Haley's voice is like melodies that get lodged in your head and yeah. her, her voice is super strong. It's just, I think it's something that it really captures you. And um, it's something that's really easy to get into and, and fall in love with. That was, that was my experience just with kind of my, my introduction to Paramore getting, getting into, it was the, the riot album, mm -hmm. um, the song crush, crush, crush. And the song, that's what you get. Uh, Those two, as soon as I heard them, I heard the guitars, I heard mm -hmm. the voice, the drum grooves. And I was like, this is good. This is really good. Yeah, and I think a lot of people were introduced to them because that's what you get was in guitar hero at the time. Oh, and so okay. a lot of people heard that's what you get a rock band one of those but i, I remember being at a party and, and playing that wherever it was gathered around like the Wii or whatever <laughs> and we were playing that's what you get so I, I know for me you might remember this mike but there was a time when on television there would be music videos wow believe it or not. yeah i remember uh, uh -huh. this is a channel called mtv which <laughs> would you know uh -huh. music television or music uh -huh. video television or something. Yes. Um, it was actually, I think it was VH1 or Fuse, one of those mm -hmm. similar networks. And um, and it was the music video to Crush, Crush, Crush. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. another, another thing that's interesting about this band is they've had a very distinctive image as well, right? Mm -hmm. So you have Haley Williams, and you mentioned her, you know, as a 16-year-old girl, an 18-year-old girl. When we first started listening to them, um, bright red dyed hair and everything. There's just a lot of personality and a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that drew me in for sure. <laughs> um, you mentioned the drums on this album, like Haley's vocals are ridiculous. I remember when this album came out, there was a review. I don't know if it was Rolling Stone or whatever, but it said she has a voice that sounds like Kelly Clarkson's wildest dreams. <laughs> <laughs> And, and she does. It's just ridiculous. It can be, it can be, it can sound violent. It can sound so crystal clear and peaceful and pure. Um, but the drums on this album, I love the drums. Zach Farrow is just an amazing drummer. Just the rhythms he comes up with and just, it sounds so heavy and just, it's, it's awesome. I love the drums on this album. Hallelujah, especially. I love the drums on, on that song. Um, interesting little guitar parts and, and, um, Josh Farrow, the, the guitarist at the time, um, who co-wrote This Is Amazing Grace with Phil Wickham, by the he way, did. he did, but he's, a. Uh, He's a good guitarist, but he's not like a he's not like a John Mayer gonna solo and noodle all up and down the neck, but he all, all up and down the neck. But he's just got these really good riffs, and uh, yeah, it's very riff driven, which I love. I like a lot of bands that are very riff riff driven, and uh, yeah, he just comes up with really good riffs. So um, those are some things musically I love about this album. Uh, what else was I gonna say? Um, oh, 
um, that's what you get. Just I love the, there's a lot of creativity on this album, especially if you consider how young they were when this album came out. Um, like that's what you get. It's in three sometimes, it's in four sometimes, and it's kind of in both at sometimes. It's just a really, it's complex songwriting, something you'd, you'd expect, um, I don't know, from Incubus or, or one of these kind of more, um, you know, cerebral bands. But uh, yeah, they just have some really in, intentional and creative songwriting, both musically and lyrically. Um, and the long titles too. I wrote that down. I know you love songs with long titles. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is the yeah. era when in pop punk when you had to put long titles on every song. So Yeah, yeah. The only difference between Martyrdom and Suicide is press coverage. That's uh -huh. an old Fallout Boy. Fallout Boy, yeah. Fall Boy or um it's the uh, Panic at the Disco. It's one of those two. Mm -hmm. I think it's Fallout Boy. Yeah, and the opening song on this one is called For a Pessimist I'm Pretty Optimistic. Or something exactly. like that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And with a great, great opener. Um, anything on the album that you would cr critique musically that just you, you didn't like? Uh, no, as a matter of fact, I think um, there, there are a few, if I'm being very, very picky, there are a few songs and for a pessimist would be one of these where it's, it's, uh, I would perhaps resolve a portion of the song to a different chord, for example. Mm -hmm. Oh, gotcha. Um, yeah. Yeah. For a pessimist, I'm pretty optimistic. Um, I'm, I'm going to circle back around to this to kind of negate the statement in just a second. Um, but it's a little too round, a little bit. It almost verges on cliche or cheesy, mm -hmm. um, how it resolves back to the one chord. Mm -hmm. That being said, the song is called, For a Pessimist, I'm Pretty Optimistic. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's entirely possible that somebody in their songwriting session said, you know what, Haley? You know what, Josh? This sounds really cliche and like, overly major overly mm -hmm. peppy and they said that's the point it's mm -hmm. about being overly optimistic yeah and overly yeah. positive so, I, I don't know that that would be one of the very <laughs> few things it, uh, my definition of like one of my top records is when i can listen to it all the way through yes. and not mm -hmm. skip any songs not fast forward through any bits yeah um mm -hmm. and uh and even with that part of that first song i never i never skip track one that's mm -hmm. uh that kicks it all off yeah, this this album has uh, it has a cohesiveness as an album, and you can't listen to it all the way through. Like, and there, there's lyrical themes that are woven throughout. Like the the big single, which is still one of their biggest hits of all time, was "Misery Business." But then that word "misery" finds its way throughout the album, and the word "riot" finds its way in a couple of places throughout the. So there's there's this like tableau of lyrics that they're using over and over uh, and over. So uh, yeah, I, I really like that. It it holds together as an album. So something I miss about music these days. So says the <laughs> old man. Mm -hmm. Cool. So um, should we get into the, the the spirituality and the themes? Let's do it. All right. So I have um, I have the lyrics here of any song. Any song you want to talk about, we can just unpack it. Is there any song that just like speaks to you thematically? Oh, thematically. Uh, you know, as my my inner emo person always comes back to that's what you get. Mm -hmm. um, very fittingly, you open this episode with that. We hadn't even talked about mm -hmm. that particular connection, but um, I don't know. I think there's there's sort of an ironic tone to that to that song, kind of speaking to yourself rather than mm -hmm. to the other person. Yeah. Um, I just I was always really drawn drawn to that. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that's where you want to begin or if you have something. Yeah, that's a great place better. to begin. I love that song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's uh, let's pull up those lyrics. That's what you get when you let your heart win. Um, and this is Jude's favorite font that I chose for these it lyrics. Is Comic Sans, isn't it it yeah. is Comic Sans. Yeah, I know you really like that. So I stab myself in the eyes right now. <laughs> Jude, uh, <laughs> Nick, Nick also suggested I use papyrus, but uh, I. I, I... <laughs> well, when, where was I? Was New York City. I was one of the places I was just recently. I think it might have been New York City. Uh, there was a restaurant like right outside my hotel called Scarletto's. It had to have been New York. And the, the everything on the outside, the awning, the adverts, everything were in papyrus. <laughs> um, I took a picture of it with the intention of sharing it to Catholic creators. Oh, uh, yeah. That's great. Um, by the way, that's how Jude and Nick and I met was through uh, Catholic creators, which is a great, a great group if you're not familiar with it. Um, 
So let's look at that's what you get. This is an example I've often used as a teacher when we're talking about like uh, concupiscence and the disordered soul about how our when our pa what happens when our passions rule our reason. Like that's what ha that's what you get when you let your heart win is you get broken relationships. That you get disturbance of peace within. So it's very, it's very Augustinian, very, very Plato that you have to, you know, the grace of Christ helps reorder our, our soul properly so that yes, we feel that passion, but we don't feel it in a way that, um, is, is out of order. And we don't desire, we don't, we have our loves in the proper order. So we love the greatest things the most and the lesser things less rather than getting, you know, dragged out of, out of control by our passions and our, in our, in our, desires. So I've often uh, used this song for that example. Um, I love this last part, pain, wake, make your way to me. And I'll always be just so inviting. Um, if I ever start to think straight, this heart will start a riot in me. What do you, what do you make of that? <laughs> it's brilliant songwriting, man. Uh, I, I will say this. We, we talk about them being a very mature band as young artists, but like, my most emo songwriting was when I was 16, and and this is this is perfect. Um, but I, you know, I what I really love about this song is the way they kind of play off of this idea of the heart and feeling, and you know, the heart beating, which typically in art is presented as the thing you want. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the thing like, you follow, yeah. Right, exactly. Um, but she's kind of taking the opposite approach and saying, like, okay. That's that's good, but I I, I need to temper that mm -hmm. with my reason, with my sense. Mm -hmm. um, that sometimes pain isn't a bad thing. Sometimes suffering is the thing by which we're made stronger. It gives us context. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know what I have always loved about this song. I think part of why I fell in love with this song was I was in a very vulnerable, heartbroken position at that time. Yeah. And so that reminder dude, this is what you get mm -hmm. when you get carried away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I drowned, I drowned out. That. Sorry, uh, go ahead. I interrupted you. No, no, that's, that's just it. Uh, we put the, the lyrics back up. I drowned out all my senses with the sound of its beating. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. it's, it's this idea that like the, the beating, the emotion, the feeling is good, but not when we lose ourselves in that, in an end unto itself, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, it absolutely makes sense. Absolutely makes sense. Um, anything else about that's what you get? No, I'm, I'm curious as to your thoughts because okay. I know you love this song as well. We've talked about it before. Yeah, well, so that that was that's my main thing is the just like the 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 disordered soul and the passions and all that. So yeah, I feel like it got to say my piece. So I'll I'll pick the next song I want to talk about. I want to talk about Hallelujah because. It's one of my favorite songs of all time, just musically, message-wise, that, that opening riff. Uh, it's just so good. And the little guitar riff in the, in the, in the middle, like right before like the second chorus, like the, and he like breaks the strings uh, all the way down. Those two yeah. things are the, um, the two riffs that I probably rip off most. In yeah, my yeah. <laughs> it's so uh, good. It's pretty easy, like yeah. walk up to yeah. that guitar and scale, like tap on that seven, eight, yeah. And then the uh, the melody starts on the two. It's like somehow everything's gonna fall right in, and just it's not often that that's where a melody starts. It's a really creative melody. So I've always loved that about this song. Um, before you even get into the lyrics, so yeah. The chorus also. This time we're not giving up. The this time we're not. That's that's also two. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. I love talking to musicians. Um, <laughs> So it's a very hopeful song, which is something that a lot of times you don't see in pop punk or emo. You know, if you listen to My Chemical Romance or Fall Out Boy, like it's it's all this self-loathing and self-deprecation, which which I also love that stuff. But <laughs> this is just so hopeful. It's so hopeful all over the place. So somehow everything is going to fall right into place if we only had a way to make it fall, all fall faster every day. If only time flew like a dove. Will God make it fly faster than I'm falling in love? Oof. Yeah. Uh -huh. You got any? You got any wisdom about that? Just as uh, I, I mean, you know this, but I had a um, a little video chat earlier today, mm -hmm. and this is reminding me of that exact situation of mm -hmm. wanting something, mm -hmm. right, and recognizing that there's a time of waiting and a mm -hmm. time of patience, um, but also trusting that like. 
it's gonna be okay. I, I, I my favorite part of the song is the bridge, which I'm sure we'll come on to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but we'll the line that. is we've got time on our hands. Yeah, uh, but okay. yeah, I mean it's it's it, it's it's a song of patience and a song of trust. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and really like kind of surrender, but a resoluteness to that, mm-hmm. like that we're not giving up. Yeah, we're yeah. not giving up, and that you know. It's, the church tells us that hope is one of the great theological virtues, you know, uh, three things remain faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love and the hope that no matter how much stuff sucks right now. And even though we're living in the muck in the, the terribleness of it all, that there's this, there's this day coming when, you know, God will wipe every tear from their eye and they will hunger no more. Neither will they thirst anymore. It's just, you know, I feel like they were reading the book of revelation a lot when they were at this album. <laughs> Well, we'll get to when let the flames begin, which is also very <laughs> eschatological. So, oh, um, glory. yeah, this time we're not giving up. Let's make it last forever. I don't think that's hyperbole. I think they're actually talking about heaven. Like this could be a worship song. Um, screaming hallelujah. We'll make it last forever. My patience is wearing thin. Can't force these eyes to see the end. If only time flew like a dove. Holy Spirit reference? Meh. Maybe. Could be. I never interpreted this through any sort of spiritual or theological lens mm. on the surface. Yeah. Um, I think it might be kind of like one of those, um, was it three doors down that sang like away from the sun and stuff like that. Where like, I don't know. That yeah. Sun with a U to sun with an O, it still makes sense. Oh, gotcha. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, I don't, maybe they did mean it mm-hmm. to refer to like in the Holy spirit, mm-hmm. like make it last forever as mm-hmm. an eternal life. It's entirely possible. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Well, I either way, the way the spiritual themes are, even if we do take it just as like oh, a yeah. very basic relationship song, yeah, for sure. it's still like, it's still very spiritual in, in the approach to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Let's get to the bridge. We've got time on our hands, got nothing but time on our hands. Tell me why you love this. Um, because patience is hard for me. <laughs> and, uh, and this is the sort of thing where it's like, um, two things about this that I love. One is um, it, it's a change of pace lyrically because everything else is like, this time we're not giving up, you know, uh, holding on to patience, wearing thin. Like, mm-hmm. we got this. Um, and, and and this is kind of like, it, it, it changes all of that from like, I want this now to like, it's okay, we've mm-hmm. got time. Yeah. But at the same time that that lyrical and thematic shift happens, there's a musical transition. Um, and we get the first line, if I'm not mistaken, in the entire song that's started off with the relative minor. Mm. Uh, it, it shifts everything else starts on on that yeah. super open major chord. Mm-hmm. Um, this is palm muted. It's like kick and closed hat and stuff on the mm-hmm. drum kit. Um, and it's just like kind of gradually building. There's also a time signature change and then it switches to double time mm-hmm. uh, at this point. And we've talked about that, Mike, a lot about how we really like that. Um, yeah. Um, I'm forgetting how to play it, but yeah, that's, that's the feel. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, uh, yeah, I I love this. I love, um, also that it's a song about patience and like, you know, waiting and they're screaming hallelujah and it's not singing hallelujah. (laughs) It's not yelling hallelujah. It's screaming (laughs) hallelujah. So I half ex- I half expect this song to be I think a, um, a less mature Paramore maybe on the first album there would have literally been screaming in this song, um, <laughs> like the, the I don't know if you're familiar with their first album All We Know Is Falling There's a song called My Heart on there, um, which is basically a worship song with screaming at the end. So um, yeah, it's uh, I think that's one of the beautiful parts about this song is it's called Hallelujah since that's the title, that's the, the line that you always wait for. And the mm-hmm. rest of the song topically is something that wouldn't typically be a hallelujah song. Yeah, uh-huh. you know? and like, this is one of the, the real challenges for me as we kind of continue to wade through COVID-19 mm-hmm. and maybe quarantines, depending on where you are or lockdowns or whatever, but it mm-hmm. was, um, you know, how do I continue to pray this hallelujah, even in times of darkness in mm-hmm. times of waiting, right? When we don't know when it's all going to end, um, I just left the country a couple of weeks ago for the first time in five years. Um, you know, like everything is, has been kind of upside down and, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. So to have this song about waiting, about expectancy and looking forward to something, um, to have the conclusion to that be 
hallelujah in the midst of waving i think it's yeah. a really mature yeah a really mature thing to write about for mm-hmm. yeah, for anybody and very, very scriptural. Like it makes me think of Job, you know, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Um, it's just, yeah, very mature and hard, <laughs> yeah. hard, hard, even if you are mature. So yeah, I love it. All right. Uh, pick a, pick a song with themes that you love and we'll talk about it. Um, a song with themes that I love. Well, you've mentioned let the flames begin yeah, already. Let's so go there. how about that one? Mm-hmm. Is that kind of takes a different tone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll get that. Let the flames begin. Here we are. All right. Tell me. <clears throat> Here's the, uh, what a shame we all became such fragile, broken things. A memory remains just a spark. I give it all my oxygen to let the flames begin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I love that. Mean? I give it all my oxygen to let the flames begin. Uh-huh. It's like you're the one propelling this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think I've ever caught up, caught that image before that. That's, it's a very, very science. It's very science class. <laughs> and normally I don't like songs that have that. Like I remember an old skillet song. That's like the line is filling up my lungs with oxygen. It just, it sounds awkward to me as a, I like, I would never write that line. You yeah. Know? Um, and so it always stands out to me. And I think this might be the only song where I get that sort of thing, but I really like it. I feel like it, it, forwards the theme mm-hmm. yeah absolutely yeah. this is how we'll dance when they try and take us down this is what will be oh glory yeah um i mean this to me seems pretty overtly about like new creation the end of time you know jesus is coming back y'all <laughs> <laughs> let the flames begin <laughs> <laughs> yeah so emo um Somewhere weakness is our strength and I'll die searching for it. I can't let myself regret such selfishness, my pain and all the trouble caused no matter how long. Um, interesting. I'll, I, I can't let myself regret such selfishness. I feel like I've always struggled with that line to know what she's talking about there. Um, like what's, what's the, what's the selfish thing that she won't regret there? You know, it's to me, like, I'm all, I've always been kind of fascinated with the Felix Culpa prayer, the happy fault sort mm-hmm. of thing. And without diving too deep down the rabbit hole or trying to get into Haley's head and ask, mm-hmm. okay, what was she actually writing about yeah. specifically? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I wonder if that's part of what this theme might involve that, you know, without selfishness, with, without brokenness, without weakness, right? Mm. We don't have the greatest strength. We don't have salvation because we don't have a need for Jesus, right? It's through that fault, mm. through, through sin, through our own brokenness that we have the greatest good that there is, which is Jesus himself. Yeah, so that it, because we are sinners, we need salvation and it, it warranted Jesus. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about it that way. I was thinking almost like... um sometimes I think people see working on yourself and like your own self-actualization, your own inner peace, your own spiritual life, your own conscience. Sometimes on people almost see that as a selfishness and mm-hmm. um, maybe she's saying, I can't let myself regret that. Like doing what I know like inside me is really important and what I'm called to do. Um, mm-hmm. Interesting. But in, in weakness being strength, like mm-hmm. if we get, super theological and look down a super Catholic lens Mm -hmm. that is reconciliation and confession. Yeah. Making yourself weak and vulnerable, but thereby obtaining (laughs) salvative grace. Like that's, Mm -hmm. that's confession. Yeah. Uh, And and it's straight up. But if we interpret it, if we read it through that lens, um, there are those analogies and those parallels. Yeah. And I think that's, that's straight out of scripture, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, at this, at this time, you know, they were, um, they they talked about their faith kind of kind of openly. At least I know Josh and Zach and Haley did, um, and so I feel pretty comfortable, you know, reading these lyrics and being like, "These are church kids," you know. <laughs> like they they oh, yeah. they know they know what worship is, you know, and um, you know they're they're struggling with it. But I uh, I feel I feel like that's in there, you know. I feel like we're not it's not we're not digging for it. We're not making it up. Um, but who knows? We can't read people's minds. <laughs> They definitely know the imagery that they're using. And I think that's, that's a really mature thing songwriting wise. 
I believe that there's hope buried beneath it all, hiding beneath it all, growing beneath it all. It reminds me of um, St. Paul talking about like, you know, the earth is growing and groaning in labor pains for like the, the second coming of Christ, like expe- ex- expectant for his return and, you know, the great hope returning to the world. This is how we'll dance when they try to take us down. This is how we'll sing. And what's interesting is on their self-titled album, which I, I think you, you've you told me that you're not as familiar with that album of theirs, but there's a song just called Part Two, and it's part two to this song. It's really oh. interesting. Yeah, and it's it's very, it's it's similar sonically, it's similar thematically. Um, yeah, really, it's, it's really interesting. interesting. So uh, yeah, if you like this song, listen to Part Two off their self-titled album. That's one with like, um, ain't it fun. And, um, yeah. and now, yeah. And, uh, what was the other big hit on the radio off of that one? I can't remember, but all right. Um, I want to talk about miracle. <laughs> this, yeah. This is a song again, talk about religious imagery. Um, and this one I think is pretty explicitly about their faith. Um, I've used this on retreats as like meditation songs and, uh, you know, had, when I was coaching um, teens on giving talks on retreats and that sort of thing. And they were looking for songs. If there was an emo kid, it was like, well, you, you know, the, you know, the, the Paramore album. And they're like, Oh yeah. I was like, that song miracle. And they're like, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I've gone for too long living like I'm not alive. So I'm going to start over tonight, beginning with you and I, when this memory fades, I'm going to make sure it's replaced with chances taken hope. There's hope again, hope embraced. And have I told you, um, there's a lot in this song um, about like not giving up on your faith and not giving up on life and not giving up on hope. And uh, you know, and I think friendship too, cause it's like, I'm not going to let you give up. Like I'm standing here with you, um, you know, to support you through this hard time. And I think there's a few songs on this album about friendship when people are going, friends are going through hard times. It's like, you can rely on me. Like you don't have to go through this alone. I am here for you. You can, you can, you can lean on me. Like I'm, I'm your strength through this. And this, this is one of the places where that, that comes through. Um, we've learned to run from anything comfortable. We've tied our pain below and no one ever has to know that inside we're broken. I try to patch things up again to calm my tears, kill these fears. Um, and then the bridge, I love, it says, it's not faith if you use your eyes. Mm-hmm. What, what do you make of that? What do you, do you agree with that? It's not faith if you use your eyes? Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's the blessed are those who believe who have not seen, you know, mm. um, I, I, what I love about this song as indicative of much of the rest of the album is it's a very, it's a very horizontally oriented record. Mm-hmm. In fact, just as you were reading through these lyrics, I was thinking, are there any songs where Haley is singing to the boy or mm-hmm. to the person or whatever? Mm-hmm. Um, it's what, always, what do you mean when you say horizontally oriented? Um, in the sense that multiple people moving in a similar direction, um, it's it's either I, as in it's introspective, mm-hmm. it's we, as in like, this is how we dance when mm-hmm. they try to take us down. Yeah. Or it's this person who's like kind of by her side, which Mm -hmm. to me sounds like a friend. It's like she is, she's there for somebody who's struggling. And she's saying, look, like we've learned to run run from anything uncomfortable. Um, But sometimes we need to be okay with the fact that we're broken. And, you know, Mm -hmm. we have to believe that a miracle is coming. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, yeah, I think that's a really beautiful thing, especially again, like, I'm, I'm kind of, since you mentioned this at the top of the hour, I'm like, okay, 16, 17, 18 year old kids writing these songs. Uh-huh. That's a really mature approach when almost everything that I was writing about when I was 16 was the girl that I thought I was in love with. Um, and it was mm-hmm. all, you do this, you treat me this way. I feel this way about you. Uh-huh. Um, and that is fundamentally not the way this album is structured. Yeah. And I think this, this song really indicates that to kind mm-hmm. of, get back to this. I know it took us all attention, but, um, no, yeah, that's good. good. That's, that, that's, that's really good. And, uh, yeah, I was going to say something, but I forgot what I was going to say. Um, let's just move right on. Crush, crush, crush is not like, I don't think there's a whole lot of spiritual themes there, but oh man, what a good song. This may be one of their best songs ever. Just I, this one definitely slaps the hardest of all. Mm-hmm. Like 
and, and yeah, it's this is probably one of the lesser pop punk songs on this record. Mm -hmm. um, and it's to, to totally negate my previous point, this is very much like <laughs> someone. Uh, <laughs> this is how but, I feel about you. And yeah. <laughs> right, uh -huh. exactly. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I, it's, it's so, it's such a, such a good song. Yeah. Um, lots of fun. Yeah. Like I said, my band used to play that and we just, oh man, we loved it. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about We Are Broken because this song, I think this could pretty much be a straight up worship song. <laughs> sure. Um, do you have, do you have strong feelings about this song? I like it. It's a, uh, it's a mature song. It's, um, it's a it's a song about brokenness, as are a number of these songs that mm -hmm. don't have this kind of undertow of hopelessness that I mm -hmm. think it's really easy to fall into when we start to reflect on our brokenness, especially mm -hmm. if we're not in a context to explicitly resolve that to Jesus and to the cross, you know, mm -hmm. which a pop punk band is not in that situation necessarily. Yeah. They they might do it mm -hmm. uh, subtly, as we're we've kind of argued that Paramore. Mm -hmm too much of the time yeah um, at least on, on this yeah, album like, yeah pardon? at least on this album i don't i don't think on most of the at least, uh, their first two albums i think it's there after that i'm not so sure but um, sure yeah. yeah uh the this is the pre-chorus keep me safe inside your arms like towers a tower over me um this uh this is straight out of the psalms or the song of songs it's somewhere it's somewhere in the old testament that god has these like strong arms like towers that tower over us and protect us um and again you're right it's we singing um we are broken what must we do to restore our innocence and the promise we adored give us life again we just want to be whole um like this is this could be hill song this could be elevation this could be bethel just do it, <laughs> you know, people yeah. be putting their hands up and <laughs> straight yeah. worship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I really love the kind of the juxtaposition between the chorus and the refrain, which is we are broken to, like you mentioned that reference from scripture, my strong tower shelter mm -hmm. over me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's, that's really beautiful. Cause it's like, what is, what is the answer to this brokenness? It's the strength the shelter of the Lord. Um, and right at the end of this chorus, give us life again. Mm -hmm. that, that sounds pretty, yeah. <laughs> sounds pretty, uh, sacramental. To pretty, me, uh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The second verse is really interesting to me and I'm, I'm interested in your opinion. It says lock the doors. Cause I'd like to capture this voice. It came to me tonight. So everyone will have a choice and under red lights, I'll show myself. It wasn't, wasn't forged. We're at war. We live like this. The, the first half seems to me like, all right, I'm going off by myself. I'm secluded. And I want to capture this voice that came to me tonight. It seems like, you know, it's just trying to pray, maybe listen to the voice of God, almost even at, uh, that idea that it came to me tonight. So everyone will have a choice. It almost seems Marian in some ways. It's like, there's something that God's speaking to me that is going to have ramifications beyond me. Like I know God has, has commissioned me in some way. And so I have to, I have to pay attention to this voice. Cause I know there's, there's some sort of anointing. There's some sort of mission that's been placed on me that I'm now responsible for. Um, do you think I'm reading too much into this? <laughs> No, I just, I take it a little bit more literally and I, I do still cast um, the, the same spiritual uh, context onto this. To me, this sounds like she is, uh, she is speaking in the moment, uh, perhaps right after a profound experience with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in probably live worship, probably mm -hmm. to, to my ear at like a big, Steubenville type youth conference. They just played like, oceans. Everyone's crying. They're playing reckless I mean, love. <laughs> like I think, where where would you have? Oh yeah. Those? Um, I was but, I was thinking like a photography studio. <laughs> like, <laughs> what is, she developing okay. photography <laughs> by herself. Like oh, she has dude. a she has a photography hobby. You know, <laughs> you're, pro you're probably right. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. So this this calls me that the, the opening phrase lock the doors and then everything else that comes after that describes an encounter mm -hmm. with the voice with, with all this stuff and to me that's saint peter in the transfiguration saying it's good that we're here mm -hmm. let's build some tents this is Haley saying lock the doors like i want to stay here in this mm -hmm. moment yeah but also reminding herself like no that's not why this moment exists yeah. it's not 
just for me to sit here under the red lights and and feel good about hearing his voice and, and you know d- abiding in that consolation forever it's about the the choice right to live the christian spiritual life in actuality mm-hmm. to take that out there and and share that with other people um mm-hmm. that's that's how i interpret this and yeah like I don't know, as a former youth pastor somebody who's led worship at student bills and mm-hmm. conferences that the one thing that i always hear that always irks me is when teens or even like core members and adults mm-hmm. will be like i just want to go back and it's like okay like it's a lot of fun yeah yeah but you got to head back like, down that mountain yeah exactly like we're mm-hmm. called to live here yeah uh, and, we're uh, we're at war we got to go down and live like this yeah exactly just like she said so um and that idea i'll show myself that it wasn't forged i think um probably every every believer at some point goes through some moments of doubts where you're like, is this all, is this all made up, <laughs> you know? And, and it, um, you know, there's different ways to kind of, to conquer that doubt and, and to move through that doubt. But I know one of the ways is when we have those personal encounters, whether it's in, in corporate worship, whether it's through the sacraments, whether it's through prayer, whether it's through service, um, we have those different ways that Jesus meets us and he, he, he talks to us and we can go back and we can remember like, no, that was, that was real. Like that, that really was real. You know, it's, it's like going back into the wardrobe in Narnia and <laughs> you're like, no, that, that was real. It was weird. And you can't really explain it to people who haven't been there and don't understand, but it's real. It's not made up, you know? Um, even if I can't prove it to you with, with math or science or whatever, I know it wasn't forged. So. Well, and isn't that the, the biggest thing that people say to tear us down, even as adults, mm-hmm. especially like when I reflect on my teenage years and the testimonies of teens that I've mentored and, and counseled, it's, you know, it's peers saying like, oh, it was just the emotion or like, do you really believe that sort of thing? You know, like, how do you know it wasn't just the red lights and the, the yeah. big sound and, mm-hmm. you know, the hype? Um, Don't mistake but- the Holy Spirit for the kick drum. Yeah. <laughs> I heard yeah. De- Derek Webb said that one time. <laughs> what about double kick drums, though? <laughs> That's totally the Holy Spirit. Yeah, same, <laughs> same thing. Just Dove. like pull it for my Valentine. Like. <laughs> Dove, fire, double <laughs> kick drum. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> um, uh, one more thing about this song I want to talk about. Uh, at the very end, she says, "And I'll take the truth at any cost." Um, do, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, uh, t- to me, it that's the hardest. It reminds me of an old, 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 old Francis Chan talk mm. um, that was really kind of one of the, the biggest, just like wake-up calls for me, I think, that said like, okay, what are you really doing as a Christian? Mm-hmm. And he starts it off with the question of, if, if you could know with 100% certainty exactly what it was the greatest greatest good that god is calling you to do mm-hmm. how would you feel about that would you want to know that um and that's a heavy question yeah. because like maybe you know right as a, as a worship leader maybe god's calling me like you know what you're going to be like the next matt Marr, and you're going to sell out thirty thousand seater arenas whatever I'd be like sweet awesome cool but what if god's saying actually you know I, I'm building up these skills in you and these charisms in you so that you can take your guitar to Sudan mm-hmm. and minister to people there. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, and, and I know for a lot of, a lot of teens, especially that question is God is building up these skills and these charisms and then in, in them potentially to bring those to religious life, yeah. right. To uh, the priesthood, to, a uh, uh, a convent to a monastic order of some sort. Um, and that possibility is scary. And so it's really easy for us, I think, to hide in the uncertainty and just kind of plead that blissful ignorance. Mm-hmm. So when I hear, I'll take the truth at any cost, um, t- to me, that it, it's very St. Paul. Mm-hmm. It's like anything but the cross I count as loss. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and, uh, and because what comes with the cross life, mm-hmm. truth, salvation, um, I'm the way the truth and, of life, yeah. mm-hmm. at a heavy cost, but yeah. it's still, that's, that's the greatest good. Yeah. So good. And I, I think, um, 
you know, when I, when I talk with friends of mine that are atheists or, you know, you, you read Richard Dawkins or any of these famous atheists, a lot of times what they say about Christians is that Christians are just happy with their little myths that somebody told them and they just believe it because it's easy and they don't really think critically about it. And of course that's a caricature, but it's also a temptation that we can just kind of sit and have this, have this blind faith that we, we don't examine. We just take it on whatever, whatever somebody told us, whatever a priest told us, whatever, um, you know, and, and that, that's a very easy type of faith. It's a much harder, but a more authentic faith to, to test things. Um, and to, to, you know, to, to challenge your, your faith so that you know what is true. And I know the years I spent as a theology teacher, that was something I would tell my students is ask questions, right? You don't want a fragile faith. Father Mike Smith has, has preached on that, that um, we want an anti-fragile faith, a faith that can, can, can be challenged, a faith that can doubt and, and move through those, you know, and, and keep going. So yeah, I love it. Anything else on this song? No, I think, I think that's good. Yeah. That's when we've we've done other episodes like this, we haven't gone like this linearly, linearly like through like song by song. And I think one that that speaks to the strength of this album. Two, I think it just speaks to like yours and my just being like total fanboys for this album. Fanboys, but we're also musicians and songwriters. Yeah, that's true. Like, that's... I think like, would I write this? And usually the answer is no, and that makes me love it that much more yeah. and want mm -hmm. to understand. You know, mm -hmm. so yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So I have a theory about the song Fences. Huh. Uh, yeah. for, first of all, it has a great, great bass line and it's real, real fun. Um, yeah. Re I love the rhythms in it. It comes in kind of on the offbeat and it, it's, it's real cool. So this is, was written like, you know, this album came out, I think I said 2007. So if you think 2005, 2006, Haley signed a record deal real young and she has, you know, grown up watching Britney Spears make a mess of her life and Lindsay Lohan make a mess of her life. And like right at this time when this came out is when like Britney shaved her head and, and I'm, I'm not throwing judgment on Britney. I know she's, she's got, I'm not saying there's a reason for her fault or whatever, but I, I wonder if this is Haley trying to, to, to say like, I've, I've been watching these famous young women who experience fame early and I'm not going to make those same mistakes where I'm just, I'm there for the pictures and everybody makes me into a sex object. And instead I'm going to, uh, you know, and I'm not going to fake it and just think and pretend like I'm happy. I'm going to set these, these fences. So I'm not always on display um, because here's the course. It's obvious that you're dying, just living proof that the camera's lying uh, and open wide. Cause this is your night. So smile. Cause you'll go out in style. It's kind of, it's kind of like, I'm not going to succumb to this fame. If you'd let me, I could show you how to build your fences and set restrictions separate from the world. Um, the constant battle that you hate to fight, just blame the limelight. So it's kind of, it's kind of a cautionary tale against fame and what fame can do to you. And her kind of saying, I'm not going to let that happen to me. I'm not going to be this sex symbol. I'm not going to let them make me into something. I'm not. Um, what do you think? Is that a, is that an okay theory? Do you, do you have something else? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, um, I think it's definitely informed by the context with which she, like her career has started. Yeah. I also suspect that because there are a few, a few lines in there that are really dry, really ironic. Um, so smile cause you'll go out in style is one of those and just blame the limelight is one of those. Um, I wonder if this is also partially her speaking to herself. Oh, uh, yeah maybe recognizing moments where she got carried away like that opening mm -hmm. verse to me shows an awareness that people are looking at her uh -huh. uh, and i'm sitting in a room made up of only big white walls and in the hall there are people looking through the window mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's like okay, i'm here i'm doing my thing but i know that i'm being watched and so yeah. everything is kind of performative yeah you know mm -hmm. um and uh, and so i wonder uh I wonder how much of this is kind of speaking to the other <clears throat> yeah. that she's seen rise and fall. Yep. Um, maybe how much of it is her kind of assembling those examples and saying, all right, Haley, I've seen you start to kind of struggle. With yeah. This. Like, start to go down this. Yeah. Pull it together. Pull it together. Uh, Haley. 
Pull it um, together, Haley. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, or, or just or be careful, you know. Be careful, see, yeah, yeah, yeah. See how this can go wrong mm-hmm. and, and you know, be better than that. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, or stay true to yourself or any of these kind of cliches, you know. Yeah, and I think that, I think you're right. And I think we've seen her do that in, in other writing, like their most famous song that they like won Grammys for is Ain't It Fun off their self-titled. And there's so many lines in that that I think you're right. They're kind of wry. They're kind of ironic. They're, they're pointing at herself like, don't go crying to your mama because you're in the real world. Um, <laughs> <Right>. You know? <laughs> but, and I, don't, I don't think given like the, like we've identified a lot of very Christian forward at the very least, lyrical themes and motifs, mm-hmm. but yeah. also said probably also intentional, directive-oriented lyrics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, to me, that says that those points of real like sarcasm and irony are probably mm-hmm. not being levied on somebody else just because that's not a very Christian thing to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. To yeah. Uh, uh-huh. to um, subtweet to use a contemporary term mm-hmm. to subtweet Britney Spears in a pop song. <laughs> yeah. is Kind of. <laughs> Poor form, I think a Paramore would be better than that. Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah, but, probably. Yeah. Probably. Sorry, Brittany. Sorry, Haley. I'm not, mean no disrespect. I love you guys. Um, <laughs> so, speaking of, of not wanting to like, not wanting to criticize outward and only wanting to criticize inward is, is, maybe Haley's MO. Um, I know misery business, which is the biggest song off this album. Still, if you look on Spotify, it's one of their top requested songs. They don't play that song anymore because Haley has said like, I like there, there's like a, a, a line in it that is like, once you're a, a whore, you're nothing more. That sort of thing. It's a song about like, Oh, I got, I got the guy you were dating this guy, but now I got him. Ah, it feels so good. I got him. I won the guy you know, kind of an F you to this other girl that she was competing with. And they don't play that song anymore. You know, <laughs> so. it, if, if I mentioned this before that, like I can listen to this album all the way through and not skip any songs. If there is a song that I skip, it's this one. And it's not because I don't like When you say this one, song. you mean, you mean misery business? Misery business. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah born for this. It's hard. Yeah. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's finish talking about misery business. We're going out of order. A little no, bit. Misery business. I think it just, it doesn't fit fit with much of the rest of the thing. Musically it does. It's Musically, the same genre, very awesome. much the same style yeah. and energy. Um but it's a it's a petty song. It's yeah. it's not it's not a song that a good person sings. <laughs> um now maybe it's embedded in this record for a reason. I, mm-hmm. I again I don't claim to know those details of the writing and production mm-hmm. and all that, but um it, it does stand out as hmm, this is kind of little nasty. Mm-hmm. I was reading on the, their Wikipedia page about this album before this episode. And one of the things it says is that misery business was written kind of in like an online collaboration almost where they were, it was probably through like Tumblr or MySpace or something like that, but they were asking for like people to share things that they weren't proud of. And mm-hmm. this was Haley sharing about an experience that she wasn't proud of. So mm-hmm. I think even, even though this is like, seems kind of petty and vindictive, um, there's probably some, there's some recognition there, you know? <laughs> so yeah, she's self-aware. <clears throat> yeah. By the way, um, if, uh, to the, the listeners or, or you, Jude, if you ever just want to see like raw talent and like just a voice, like no other you've heard, there's like versions of her singing this acoustic, just like backstage at warp tour, Josh is playing guitar and she's just singing. And there's just like one mic and, this little 16 year old 18, I don't I think she's probably 18 is singing this song and everyone in the audience is just like, Holy crap. <laughs> where is this voice coming from? Cause she's like pint sized and just, yeah, it's <laughs> crazy good. <laughs> yeah. We talked about musicality as well. And I think this is right up there with the opening riff from that's what you get in mm-hmm. terms of the, just the catchiest, the slickest like mm-hmm. guitar, yeah. drum, everything together. Um, it's so well put together. It's, yeah. it is a brilliant song. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, um, born for this, this is the last song on the album. Sure is. Right? We've talked about every single song on this album. <laughs> I didn't think we were going to do that, but, uh, I'm glad we did. All right. So let's talk about born for this. Um, yeah. you want to start, you want me to start. You go for it. All right. So, uh, this song I think talks a lot about, 
This this is also a very pop punk song. It's kind of like, hey, we belong in the radio. We want to take the radio back for rock music, you know? Like, rock used to rule the radio, and now hip-hop and pop have kind of taken over, and rock has kind of taken a backseat. But we want the airwaves back. We don't need the headlines. We just want we want the airwaves. Um, <laughs> it, ta- it takes acquired mind to taste this wine. Like, it's a little self-important, you know? <laughs> um. And then this is definitely, I think, artists, especially after their first album, and they know they're going to be playing these songs in front of big crowds, they write songs for live audiences to, like, belt back in their faces. And this song is very obviously written to have the crowd belting back in their faces. (laughs) You know, you lean out over the crowd, you hold the microphone out, like, you sing this one. Yeah. Be lying if I told you I haven't done the exact same thing. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Mm-hmm. And there's references. Tell me, tell me, do you feel the pressure now? Like that's um, feel the pressure was off their first album. That was one of their big hits. So there's definitely a, a, a reference to that. Um, everybody live like it's the last day you will ever see. Um, that's interesting. Another reference to last last days, or at least a person's last day. This is a very Carpe Diem song. I feel yeah. like mm-hmm. we're born for this, man. You know, it's like this is our time. Mm-hmm. Take it. Yeah. Right now, you're the only reason I'm not letting go. And time's out if everyone's worth pleasing. Um, You'll trigger a landslide to kill off their finite state of mind. I'm not exactly sure what she's talking about here, but I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of like a love letter to fans. I feel like Um, Rascal (laughs) Rascal Flatts had a song like this where it's just like, "This is why we do it. We do it for the girls in the front that are dancing and the boys in the back with the beers." And and like, (laughs) this is kind of. See, I would take it as kind of antithetical to that. I think this is a, a um, it's a rallying cry for authenticity. Mm, okay. Turns out if everyone's worth pleasing, like it's not about pleasing everybody else. It's mm. about being true to yourself and, mm. you know, your music, your art, your whatever it is that you're here for, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, I saw, I, I saw it as... I like, takes inspired minds to taste this fine wine. Mm-hmm. You see, know, I, because, I, sorry, continue. I'll wait till you... Oh, go, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, I see it as um, they're not trying to please everyone, but they are trying to please their fans. Like the emo kids, the punk kids, like, <laughs> we were born for this. We okay. have the acquired minds that can taste this minds. We're taking the airwaves back, uh, you know, and you'll trigger a landslide. We're going to kill off their finite state of mind like that. You know, forget that, that Ka- forget that Katy Perry stuff. Okay. Like this is real music. <laughs> <laughs> What's your, what, what do you have against the teenage dream, Mike? I I have a lot of love for for uh, some Katy Perry. Not all Katy Perry, but some You Katy didn't Perry. date any California girls. That's, that's, <laughs> that's true. I've never dated a California girl. Um, maybe maybe we'll, we'll have to do an episode on Katy Perry at some point. So I'm, I'm done. Let's do it. <laughs> I think the, uh, what, I, what I like about this song is it's another third person, uh, first person plural one, right? Mm-hmm. So it's we, altogether we. Um, and so I think like in that statement of authenticity, she and the band are like, yes, we as singers, but also like we as this group of people here, um, you know, in that sense, it's a very like worshipy, like Mm -hmm. kind of pump up worship thing. I love worship songs that are in Mm -hmm. first person plural. Like we sing this, Uh um, because we are here together for, Mm -hmm. you know, for one purpose. We Um, are called to act with justice is that david hosk are we allowed to sing that anymore i'm not sure we are <laughs> sorry canceled can't can't sing that anymore <laughs> ixnay ixnay on the ombre um, <laughs> another pop punk reference if you get that comment what ixnay on the ombre is um yeah so i love this part of the end all right so you think you're ready okay then say this with me go we were born for this it's, it's definitely this call and response with the yeah. Oh, yeah with the audience so good so good by the way she sings the crap out of this song Mm. yeah just oh my gosh so good so good um what else what else do we have to say about this album i feel like we've we've covered a lot it's good um it's uh i mean i i do production also so like i guess mm-hmm. this is one of the kind of seminal records for me in terms of honing the sound that i go for when i write and produce mm-hmm. music yeah um especially the drum tones it's just like oof they hit you in the gut and it's mm-hmm. good. Do you know anything um, about David Bendeth, who's the producer on this album? He co I know he's a lot of work for Breaking Benjamin as well. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure the album Phobia, mm-hmm. um, which uh, that's Breaking Benjamin are one of 
-hmm. probably right up there, maybe a step above Paramore mm -hmm. in my book in terms of favorite bands, favorite albums of all time. It's like mm -hmm. Riot by Paramore, Breaking Benjamin, Phobia, right in that same yeah. arena. He produced, I believe, that record. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, I know they... Um... I'm 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 drawing a blank on the guy that did Brand New Eyes, but he's super famous and he did uh he did a lot of Green Day stuff, um, okay. but uh, Jason Metal Johnson from uh, Nine Inch Nails did Self Titled and um, After and After. So okay. anyway, they've worked with some awesome, really good producers. I was just curious if you knew anything about David Bendup. Um, yeah, Rob Cavallo, that's the guy's name. Who did okay. brand new eyes? Okay, sorry, we're we're talking inside baseball stuff now. <laughs> Not relevant to the spiritual life, but uh, that's that that's what you get for having two musicians on. <laughs> that's what you get. Exactly. All right, so Mike um, Tinney and Jude in the same room. <laughs> yeah, we're we'll we're gonna we're gonna try to get us in the same room and and do an episode on something else. So we'll have to talk about that and think about that. Jude, thank you so much for for being here. If you had to tell people um three songs on this album that they had to hear, what would you tell them? Crush, crush, crush. That's what you get. And ooh, I'm gonna say just for the musicality, I'll say Misery Business because you mm -hmm. can't. You can't listen to Paramore and not have that be one of the first few. Like that song launched them. So mm -hmm. Crush, 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 that's what you get and Misery Business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say Crush, 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 um, Hallelujah. And Ooh, uh, yeah. actually a song we didn't talk about that is one of my favorites is When It Rains, um, mm -hmm. which is one of the softer ones that I think previews some of what they do on their later albums. And another one about like helping a friend through hard times or through depression, that sort of thing. Um, I love When It Rains. I think it's so good. Um, great drums in that one too. All right. Well, uh, Jude Benjamin, where can people find you? Well, um, so benjaminjude.com. That's my website. Uh, benjaminjude.com. I'm also on Spotify, Apple music, all of those things. Um, it's just Benjamin Jude. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's my name. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I'm on Instagram as well. Benjamin at Benjamin Jude music. Mm -hmm. Um, hit me up. I follow back. <laughs> I, uh, a lot of social justice stuff these days uh -huh. so you get fired up about it and I'm here, uh, for, it. I'm here for it sometimes sometimes the music stuff because yeah. that's what i do uh -huh. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you so much, Jude, for being with us. Uh, I'm Mike Tenney, your host of Pop Culture Catechism, and you can find me at MikeTenneyMusic.com, online at PKMikeyT. If you have any thoughts on this album, feel free to, to comment um, and, and let us know. Uh, this is Awaken Catholic. If you want to make shows like this happen, then go to AwakenCatholic.org and join the Awaken Nation for just a not much like the price of a cup of coffee. You can do a one-time donation. You can become a recurring donor. It's all tax deductible and it helps make shows like this possible. It keeps the studio running and, and everything that we do. You can also support us by downloading the Hallow app through our site and you can get a free month of premium through our site as well. Highly recommend it. Let Jesus lull you to sleep or wake you up in the morning. Just, yeah, it's awesome. Do it. I think that's all for today, folks. Go listen to Paramore, put on your guy liner, and uh, yeah, till next time, God bless you. This show and all media on Awaken Catholic is made possible by the Awaken Nation and the Hollow app. The Awaken Nation is a community of people like you who support all things Awaken for as cheap as a cup of coffee a week and get access to exclusive content. Learn more by visiting awakencatholic.org slash donate. Hollow is the only audio-guided Catholic prayer app focused on contemplative prayer and traditional Catholic meditation such as Lexio Divina, Daily Examine, and the Rosary. We here at Awaken all use Hollow every day and love it. To learn more or give it a try, visit hollow.app/awaken.